So here's the challenge. I played a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Omega Ruby, but the catch is, I used only evolutions. So to start the game, I've given myself one of each of the Pokemon Eevee evolves into. Plus, just an Eevee, cause why not? Through the entire game, I can only use these Pokemon. If anything faints, it's considered dead and I can't use it anymore. The rest of the hardcore Nuzlocke rules obviously apply. Battles will be in set mode. No healing items can be used in battle. And levels can only be as high as each gym leader's ace. And of course, I won't be able to use anything if I do catch stuff. So essentially, I've got to do my best to try to protect each of these evolutions and see if I can somehow get through the entire game. If you enjoyed the video, remember to hit that like button, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I'm on my way to 300k, and it would really mean a lot. Let's get into it. So to start things off, you know, we're feeling pretty good. I've got the power of the elemental beast on my side, and all I've got to do is just beat the shit out of Mei and uh, teach her a lesson she will not soon forget, and then we're on our way into the Pokemon world. So at 10 years old, we say goodbye to our mom forever, and then it's me and my evolutions against the world. So we say what's up to our dad, who left us one night to go get milk and never came back. It turns out he is the gym leader in Petalburg. He also introduces us to this nerd Wally, and we like show him how to catch a Pokemon. Uh, but you know, we can't battle Norman yet, so we basically say, see ya, I'ma come back and beat that ass later. It turns out I actually don't have, you know, a fighting type EV, so this one might be a little bit scary, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So first order of business, we head into Petalburg Woods, where we have a scientist guy to help out, who, you know, gets attacked by a magma guy. Turns out he just has a Poochiana that couldn't fight its way out of a wet paper bag. So we make easy work of that dude, and we're pretty much into the first gym. We of course have a few trainers along the way, but none of these early game losers have ever seen an evolution before, so we show them the business, and then we're basically introduced to Rustboro City, where we have our first victim, which is going to be Roxanne and the Rock Gym. So there's nothing really too crazy for us to do, so let's go take on Roxanne and see how it goes. It was easy, Roxanne has literally nothing for Vaporeon, so we water down her nose, and we collect our first gym badge, and we're feeling pretty good. Early game, with all these evolutions, we're pretty much unstoppable as of now, until... I inevitably make a mistake. So right after the gym, we get summoned to go be a good citizen, where we have to beat up this guy's Poochiana once more, which then gets back Mr. Briny's Pico, the beloved Pico, which is gonna be important because then Briny is gonna take us on his boat to basically go allow us to whip some ass at the next gym. Moral of the story, you find a guy with a boat, you help him out, because now I'm just on a boat, which is great. So once we land in Duford, we find out really the only thing for us to do here is kind of just take on the gym. So I'm ready for it. I've got a Sylveon and some vibes. And we get to check out Brawly's weird gym full of just cardio equipment. This dude takes his cardio health seriously. And what he's also going to take seriously is some evolution damage. I use Leafeon to finish off the Machop as I want to just keep Sylveon safe. Honestly, it's my most important evolution. If it somehow died here, I would be extremely sad. And his last Pokemon is going to be the Makuhita. At level 16, I don't want to leave Leafeon in here, and I decide to go into Espeon, where I realize I actually did not level cap here, and I'm a few levels lower, but it goes for a bulk up, and then Espeon does his Espeon thing and finishes it off. So, Crisis averted, and we grab our second gym badge, just like that. So before we're done with Duford, we just have to deliver a letter to the boy Steven, and then at that point, Briny just kind of takes us on over to Slateport. Our personal boat chauffeur comes in clutch, once again, and essentially what stands between us and Slateport is just a bunch of meaningless trainer battles. I let Jolteon handle them no problem, and the main thing for us to do in Slateport is now basically locate this dude in his inconspicuous hat, and that is going to be Captain Stern. So, apparently Stern has some beef with Team Magma, as of course we got to deal with these goons again. This time there is going to be two of them, they do battle us individually, and we just absolutely Vaporeon the shit out of them, and it's pretty much no problem. So, once we defeat these dudes, what happens is... We finally get to meet the leader, so Maxi is finally going to show himself, and luckily we don't have to battle him this time. He tells us a whole bunch of stuff about how he wants the land to be bigger or whatever these guys are all about, and then Stern's like, hey thanks, you can have these Devon parts for your services. And uh, me and my evolutions are just kind of cruising on along. So we head out of the city to the north, and we find ourselves in a little bit of trouble against this uh, Minin and Plusl double battle for some reason, but it ends up being fine, and what's coming next is going to be that May fight. Uh, on the route under the cycling place. So I have Glaceon take care of the Shroomish, no problem. I use Vaporeon to absolutely drown the shit out of this Slugma. And the final Pokemon, Marsh Tomp, just goes down to the Leafeon. So, we tell May to kick rocks and never bother us again. And we are on our way to our new city where we can battle our third gym leader, that is going to be Watson. Before we do so, I decided to put the main dude, Stevie, on the team. I feel like Eevee needs to get in on the action. And in its very first fight, as you're going to see here, we come across a level 17 Abra, who Turns out to have the hidden power, and I'm thinking, please do not be fighting. Stevie actually lives it with 9 HP, because we are the GOAT, 
able to finish it off with a covet and our first death in crisis was uh right on the edge there so realizing we are in fact not invincible our next order of business is to battle our little dude wally in front of watson's gym he kind of just makes you battle him he only has this route so it shouldn't be that scary and Evie just manhandles the thing, so Asthma Kid is no longer a problem, and we can finally do the gym. So Watson gives us a little bit more of a problem than what we've seen so far. So of course, I don't have much for electric types, but I do have Flareon considering two of his Pokemon are steel. So I go for the Ember, it doesn't quite end up knocking this thing out, as it's now able to paralyze me, uh, which ordinarily would be kind of good because I'm actually a Guts Flareon, however, I don't really have any good physical attacks. To like take advantage of that so he ends up using his first super potion as i ember once more get a little bit of a lower roll and luckily a quick attack does finish it off because i need to conserve flareon as much as possible so on his next pokemon i do decide to conserve the flareon and i can just easily switch into jolteon on electric attacks because i'd be absorbing out here so electric moves are not going to work of course and i can just kind of throw stars at this thing until it dies as it actually ends up going for the charge so then it lives this next swift but who are we kidding? It's literally just a Voltorb, and it can't really touch me. One rollout is, you know, something, and I finish it off with another Swift. So his ace Pokemon is actually a little bit scary, and that is Magneton. So I can't really touch this thing, so what I do is I decide to switch back into Young Vitamin D, who actually comes in on a Supersonic, and being both paralyzed and confused is not great, because odds are I get attacked myself, and then he hits me with, like, a, a pretty strong electric move. So I'm just going to go back into Jolteon. I can kind of pivot in on electric moves all day as uh, Volt Switch obviously not going to work, and I essentially decide to get Flareon in, and after a little bit of trial and error, I finish this thing off with an Ember. Paralyzed and below half health, it was definitely getting down close to it, but we're able to finally finish off Watson Deathless, and we get ourselves our third nice and shiny badge. So the spirits are high, we're feeling good, but we're just going to go ahead and keep moving, knowing that uh, things are starting to heat up a little bit. So just north of Mauville, we have this house that's like full of a family of trainers you have to battle all back to back, and I realize... I may be in for it a little bit here, but after honestly some pretty close shenanigans, we end up defeating all of them by the skin of our teeth, and we live to see another day. So a little bit up ahead, we end up running into May, and we take a nice little look at our next area we're going to set our sights on, which is also going to contain our next gym leader, Flannery. This random crackhead's going to tell us a little bit about trees or something. We take a nice little nap with a grandma to heal up, and before we know it, we arrive in Fallabore Town, our new city, where we know we have... A little bit of a, a little bit of a run-in with Team Magma coming up at the Meteor Falls. So we get to experience some of the brief nostalgia that Meteor Falls gives us, and we get to see what all the fuss is about in here. Long story short, Magma guy's like, man, we want more land, and we actually get to team up with Mei to have a little double battle against two admins. And this fight is actually pretty damn scary. So, they lead off with a coughing and a Mightyena, as I have my Leafeon out here not having the best of time against stuff like the coughing, so obviously I have to get out of here. So I decided to bring in the Flareon because I figure, you know, why not? Um, of course, I do take the Sludge much better than the Leafeon would. And of course, the dumbass Shroomish just uses Mega Drain on the wrong Pokemon because May always does. But Mightyena has different ideas and decides to roar me out, which is fine. And it brings out the Glaceon. So uh, I actually end up taking a Swagger from the Mightyena and of course hit myself in Confusion. Then I hit myself in Confusion again as Shroomish, for whatever reason, uses Worry Seed on the Mightyena. Why would you do that? Watch, now it's- Oh, shit! <gasps> we lived. <laughs> oh my god. So by the grace of Lord Arceus, somehow I'm able to live the self-destruct, and after that, the game is pretty much over. So then, of course, Blue Dude shows up, and he's like, Man, we want more water. And that's kind of the gist of it. Essentially, we're on our way to the next city to be able to take on Flannery. But before we do so, we need to take the sweet little cable car up, and uh, if we thought we had seen the last of these bad people, we, we get to fight him again. So we walk toward the edge of the volcano, and of course the dude that we just taught a lesson to is just chilling here, and we have to fight him once more. Luckily, this time his coughing does not explode on us, and we can kind of take care of this match pretty easily. But then on some Star Wars shit, we walk along this crazy glass structure over a volcano, and then we're met with the actual boss Maxi, where we have another boss fight. So Maxi's the dude with the Mighty Yenna and the Swagger shenanigans, and I find myself in a situation where, damn, this thing is actually level 25, and I'm a bit underleveled for this, but uh, I do finish this thing off after a whole bunch of nonsense with Swaggers, and I'm able to finish off the Mighty Yenna, whereas the next Pokemon is a level 27 Camerupt, and I am in trouble. Uh, I noticed that Earth Power does a lot to my most defensive Pokemon, uh, the Umbreon, where I find myself in quite the pickle here. I can't 
really get in Vaporeon safely here. If I can just get Vaporeon in, this thing is four times weak to water. Uh, but looking at my special defense stats, I'm actually 10 lower than what Umbreon has. So hard switching into Vaporeon is not really an option because I'm also slower than this thing, so I can't take two. And it turns out Stevie has to absolutely take one for the team here. So I bring in Eevee as he actually ends up going for Flame Burst for whatever reason, and I actually live it. But Eevee's time has come, and if anything has to die, I, I decide to sacrifice Eevee. But what's done is done, and I can at least bring in Vaporeon at this point and finish this thing off with some water. So, uh, he does have one Pokemon left, and that is going to be the Golbat. All I really have to do is kind of just let Espeon finish it off after a little bit of struggles with it. But we get ourselves out of this boss battle that I was definitely not prepared for. And I realize I gotta start taking stuff seriously, because once things start dying, I'm gonna run out of options, so... Good news is we can get ourselves to the next city for the next gym. I decided to stop in the hot springs to hang out with the old ladies that are usually in here, and Game Freak took this away from us. The grannies are no longer in the water, I repeat. The grannies have been stolen from us. So in more important news, we're now at Flannery. So the main reason why I was so worried about losing Vaporeon was essentially just the idea that I did not want to lose my water type right before the fire gym. But luckily, water type is intact and we are ready to go. So it turns out again, I bite off a little more than I can chew at this fight. At least the first Pokemon Slugma goes down to the Umbreon nice and easy, but the problem we're going to have is with her Ace Torkoal. So, Umbreon can't do very much damage. What I can do is know that I can take attacks from this thing. I decide to go for an Assurance here to see how much it does, and it does literally nothing, as this thing sets up a curse in my face. So this situation just got a whole lot worse, as I don't really know what attacks this thing wants to throw at me, but now it's at plus one attack and defense. I go for another Assurance here, just basically trying to get as much chip as possible, knowing I can't really switch, and it goes for yet another Curse. So, now it's at plus two and I decide, okay, I gotta stop this. I go for the Charm, completely forgetting about White Smoke, and then it fires off an Overheat directly at me. It literally goes for the Special Attack after using Curse. In the Sun, Overheat Critical Hit nearly takes out Umbreon, which is absolutely insane being able to dodge the death there. And now I decide I'm going to switch into Vaporeon. What's the worst that can happen? It ends up going for Body Slam instead of Overheat once again. And I'm barely able to take two, it looks like. Unless he gets a high roll. So, I go for the Water Pulse. It's my best damage. Unfortunately, in the sun, it's not going to be quite enough. And this thing fires off another Body Slam at me. I'm praying that I'm able to live. And luckily, Vaporeon lives it with literally 7 HP, which is absolutely insane. And at this point, I don't feel like another Water Pulse kills it. So what I do is... I switch into Espeon here, who I know after doing a lot of calcing, that a Body Slam should leave me with around 10 HP. I live it with 11, which is insane. I can then outspeed and kill with a side Beam, and holy shit, I've never battled such a scary turtle. Uh, so, at least now the last Pokemon's a Numel, who I can deal with with the Sylveon. And thank god we barely get out of Flannery without anybody dying. We grab ourselves our fourth Gym Badge, and we are feeling pretty scared. The worst part is, there's pretty much nothing for us to do at this point in the game, other than just go take on Norman kinda right away. So my team honestly sucks for this. Norman apparently in this game has two slacking and a Vigoroth, and I don't really have much that can either take an attack from a slacking, or really do anything in terms of damage in return. So, I guess we gotta just figure it out. Of course, before we can battle our dad, we do have to take care of these people in front, and I decide to use my Umbreon. It's my most defensive dude, and I have kind of the best matchup in terms of just normal types. But this dude's Lanoon somehow almost whoops my ass, and I am scared. But we get through it because Umbreon is a gangster, and now we have to fight this lady. I fucking hate this lady. So her whole thing is using X attacks. Luckily, I have Charm, which harshly lowers physical attack, and I'm feeling fine. I'm defensive, I'm an Umbreon. So I've weakened it, and all I've really got to do is kind of smack it around a little bit, and as it turns out... Oh, fuck. It uses... He did, in fact, take that personally, and now I lose my best evolution, arguably, and uh, I'm feeling pretty bad about this Norman matchup. So pretty much as soon as I go in to talk to him, I realize there's actually a very easy way to defeat Norman, and that is through the use of a little TM I like to call Dig. So of course with him having two slacking on his team, essentially what we can do is take advantage of his Truant, not being able to attack every other turn. We can basically dig ourselves underground on the turn that he attacks, avoid the attack, and then just slowly whittle him down with Dig. The problem is, I am over here, 
and the dig TM is way over here. And I do not have access to fly, so we're going on a long journey. I take like an hour long cycle across the entire Hoenn region, and we are finally back, where our dig plan actually works perfectly and we defeat Norman with no problems. And we mess up his shiny floors in the process. So at this point, we've gained ourselves the fifth badge from our dad, but we've lost an Umbreon, so I kinda hate to see it, but the next thing you know, we're getting introduced to a Latias with Steven, and then all of a sudden we're riding straight nuts to back flying through the Hoenn region, and he takes us to what looks to be a deserted island, which is a little bit suspicious, but there is some magma shenanigans going on here, so we've got a, a little battle where we fight alongside Steven, and Vaporeon pretty much handles it, no problem. So from here, Alatios is going to join the squad, but of course we can't use this thing because it is not part of the evolutions, and we're essentially on our way toward the next city, which is going to be Fortree. Of course, Team Magma has taken over the Weather Institute, so we come in here, we save the day by just killing this camera up nice and easy, and they give us a cast form as thanks, but we basically just toss that bitch to the side, and before you know it, we are in one of the greatest Pokemon cities ever, Fortree City, baby. So Steven is going to give us these crazy goggles that allow us to basically see the Kecleon and that allows us to get the one that's in front of the gym out of the damn way so we can take on the flying type gym leader. So I've actually got some pretty good coverage for Winona. As long as her Altaria doesn't set up dragon dances, we are in the money. So Vaporeon takes care of the Swellow. Uh, Sylveon does end up taking care of the Altaria, ain't no problem. And Jolteon basically just finishes off both the Skarmory and the Pelipper. And we get ourselves our next badge. So our next order of business is to head down the most beautiful route in Pokemon. We, along the way, have a couple scary battles, but for the most part, we make it through okay, and we then arrive in Lily Cove City. So pretty much right when we get into the city, May is waiting by the old staircase to jump us, and even though her Pokemon are getting a bit scarier at this point, we do handle her pretty easy, and then we're pretty much on our way out of the city as we have some magma nonsense to take care of. Inside of Mount Pyre, I do find the TM for Shadow Ball, which is pretty neat. And then before you know it, I'm on top of the mountain facing down just kind of a line of magma grunts. After a few minorly difficult and annoying battles, we get up to the top to find Maxi just straight up pondering some orbs. And instead of battling us up here, he actually just lets this lady do it, who does have a pretty scary camera up, but we do come out on top. And the old people say, hey, that was pretty badass of you. You can actually hang on to this blue one. So with blue balls in our pocket, we head over to Slateport, where we know their submarine is, and the magma dudes do get away, but we do know where to find them in the hideout. So look, the magma hideout's pretty boring overall. We're speeding through portals, having a good time until... Now. Oh, shit! Live that acrobatics with seven, I ain't even paying attention out here. This Golbat bout destroyed me. <laughs> so we nearly lose Flareon to a Golbat, but everything is all good. We get to see their crazy-ass camera-up submarine go into the water, and then we're pretty much up out of here. So it stands between us and the next gym is pretty much 7.8 out of 10, too much water. But after too long of swimming our little ass off, we do eventually land in Lily Cove, where, of course, the first thing we do is land on the damn moon. Moon landing fake confirmed. So we head on into the psychic gym, where we find a Metacham that nearly high jump kicks my ass into the afterlife, but it turns out to be okay, and it's time to take on the twins. So of course, with Liza and Tate being a double battle, we're able to surf our way out of it pretty easily, because for some reason they just nerf these gym leaders in this game and only give them Solrock and Lunatone, but we take the free dub with our Vaporeon collar popped, and we get ourselves our seventh badge. So it turns out outside of the gym there's an absolute catastrophe happening, and of course it's up to our 10 year old ass to fix it. So we find the camera up submarine, we push ourselves around a few little rocks, and then we find this guy. So Groudon's mostly just chilling in his hot tub minding his own business, but now we've got to fight Maxi, and the scariest part is he does have a mega camera up, which we kind of work our way around a little bit, and we do come out victorious. But Groudon decides that since we disturbed him, he's making global warming happen literally right now. So now it's like all hot and stuff outside, and Steven tells us it's our responsibility to fix, and we don't really care, we just want to head to the next city and grab our next gym badge. But I'll tell you what, when we finally get to Zootopolis, the vibes are not good. Long story short, they tell me I gotta put on this crazy suit, and straight up mount this bastard. So we ride our noble steed over to his crazy crystal lair, where now we have to fight this thing, and honestly, fighting is not an option, you cannot use water moves in his sun. This thing goes full primal on you, and our only option is to get out of this battle via using the Master Ball. So enslaving this legendary in a ball that he will never be able to come out of does restore peace to the worlds, and everything's looking A-OK. -okay. So it's finally time to take on the last gym leader. And boy, would it suck if we lost our best evolution this late in the game, huh? So here's the situation. When I get into this gym, my main goal is to get through the puzzle without falling through to where all the trainers are, because my Pokemon are dangerously close to what the level cap is, and if I go over any more levels, I won't be able to use them in this gym battle. So naturally I misclick and I fall right through to the dungeon of women stuck under this gym, and we find this lady. 
So she's just got herself a gold dog. I'm thinking, hey, this is no problem. I'm a Sylveon and I can easily handle this thing. The power of the speed up button allows me to forget how many times I've been screeched. And then, he's gonna do, oh! <laughs> so losing Sylveon's a big punch in the nuts. The bigger problem we have though, is now that my whole team is pretty much at level cap. And I really cannot afford to fall through and have to battle any more trainers. Or else I'm gonna go over the cap and then be screwed. But luckily, by the grace of God, I do get through without falling, and it's time. So essentially, Swords Dance Leafeon is the absolute goat. We destroy Wallace with it, and we grab ourselves our final gym badge. And now the only thing standing between us and victory is the Pokemon League, which I may or may not be ready for. But before we do that, we obviously have to get through Victory Road, which should be easy, right? So this place is, of course, full of ace trainers. They've got crazy Pokemon, the strongest we've seen so far and we definitely have our struggles, but with a little bit of luck on our side, we are able to defeat most of the trainers in there until we find this asshole. So we have ourselves one last showdown with Wally, and let me tell you, I may not be ready for this. So Wally's got a full team of five ready to roll, and he is not the little kid with asthma that we met and showed him how to catch a route. I mean, he probably still has asthma, but he's kind of scary now. So honestly, we handle his first four Pokemon pretty well. I do take a little bit of damage, but honestly, we're feeling pretty good up until his ace comes out, and I realize I might be in some trouble. My dude's got an inhaler and a mega Gallade, and I do not have much for this. I tell you what would be really nice is if I still had a Sylveon, but honestly, all I can really do is let Jolteon outspeed, get as much damage as possible, and then face his fate, which is essentially getting absolutely destroyed, and going into the league without Jolteon is gonna be a whole problem. However, at least I am able to get out of this battle by going into Espeon and Revenge Killing, and we're finally out of here. So after crushing this nerd's dreams for the last time, the fun finally begins. As we get out of the victory road, Jolteon lists, but we do have hope. And it's all come down to this. I've done my best to conserve as many evolutions as possible to give me the best chance in the Pokemon League, but I do only have a team of five going into this, and while, you know, we'd prefer six, honestly, these are the soldiers that have made it this far, and there's nothing left to do than get into it. So our first battle is going to be, of course, against Sydney, the dark type specialist. I mainly just need to get through this without anything dying because, listen, if something dies at the first one, I'm going to have a bad time. So this dude leads off with a Mighty Enna, and my plan is basically to let my most defensive Evolution, which is the Vaporeon, kind of handle as much early as I possibly can. Luckily, Doggy can't swim and we're able to take care of the Mighty Enna, no problem. Unfortunately, the Shift Tree is a little bit more of an issue for the Vaporeon, so I am forced to basically go into my Flareon at this point. We take the incoming Leaf Blade no problem. Unfortunately though, the Shiftery is faster, so it's able to get off a faint attack before it takes a fiery bite to the face, and we are able to take care of it. So for the incoming Sharpedo, we're able to easily get in Leafeon and then just slice his ass up. Next up is Absol, who bulky ass Vaporeon does handle, and then all that's left is gonna be the Cacturn that gets bopped by the Glaceon. So the whole team comes together for the win, and everyone is miraculously still alive. Next up, we've got Spooky Phoebe, and I've got a plan here. Basically, Leafeon go sharp, do big damage. However, Dusclops lead does kind of curse me, stab me in the damn forehead with a stake, and it definitely ruins my sweep, so I'm forced to switch into Flareon instead, which can take care of the Dusknoir, and then next up being Sableye, I decide to switch into Vaporeon. I say, hey, catch this wave, and instead it drowns, and uh, next is Banette, who also cannot swim, and neither can his twin sister. So, just like that, the second Elite Four member is down. So here's where things really start heating up. Not literally, because we now have to take on the ice type leader, but it's gonna start getting pretty damn difficult from here on out. So look, Glacia, while I still have a Flareon, is definitely gonna be difficult. So she has a lead Glalie, that thing just gets absolutely melted by a Fire Fang. Uh, but then comes the problem, which is Big Bertha. <laughs> I really need to conserve the Flareon, so I do switch into the Glaceon on the Surf, and I can take it, but not great. So. We also get the benefit of the hail from the ice body ability, which is pretty sweet, but all I can really do here is go for a shadow ball. And luckily, with the spousal defense drop, the damage will be pretty nice, but the surf's just starting to do too much damage, so I'm kind of just forced to go into Vaporeon with the water absorb, and I can kind of just finish it slowly with surfs after they go for some full restore action. So Frostlass is next, and I have to get Flareon in at some point, and this is kind of my best chance to do it. The shadow ball does hurt a little bit, uh, but I am able to finish it off with the Fire Fang. I can't really go for uh, the Flare Blitz here, plus we do get enough damage from that anyway. So it does set up the hail before it goes down. And next is the second Frostlass, who this one just has Ominous Wind. So it gets destroyed by our Fire Fang, and we are all good. The final Pokemon is just another Glalie, and luckily it doesn't have enough damage, and it just goes down to a Fire Fang as well. 
So we do get through Glacier without anybody dying, which is great because I definitely need everything I have for the next guy. So aside from the champion fight, Drake is definitely going to be the biggest challenge yet because dragons are scary and I really need to conserve every evolution if I want a chance at being able to beat Steven because Steven's team is honestly pretty insane. We are just two battles away from winning the entire thing and we're ready. So Drake's going to lead off with an Altaria that obviously it was not ready for an Ice Beam. Thank God I do still have Glaceon around. So we grab an easy kill, but the rest is not going to go as easy. So his next Pokemon is a Flygon, and although this does look pretty nice for me, I know that it does have Flamethrower for coverage, so I'm basically forced to switch into Vaporeon, who luckily does have Ice Beam, as I went through hell to get the TM for Ice Beam, but it's pretty clutch to have now. So this weird special attacking Flygon does go down to an Ice Beam, and we're feeling pretty good. The Salamence matchup is pretty interesting because... While I know that Vaporeon can definitely take at least one hit and fire off an Ice Beam, the problem is that I've taken too much damage uh, to be useful for the rest of the fight. So I decided to worthy trade off as his Dragon Rush leaves me low, but Ice Beam does grab the kill, thank you for four time weaknesses, and he also has a second flag on, of course, that's going to force me into Leafy on an Earthquake, which we do take nicely. So I can essentially just Leaf Blade as I take the Dragon Claw, and thank god Leafy on be fast as fuck boy. And his final Pokemon is going to be the Kingdra. So, of course, I cannot really let Leafeon take an Ice Beam in this situation, so I'm just going to switch into the Ice Lad himself. And now we're just two Ice Beams away from taking care of the Kingdra, and the HP management did work out. So we finish off the final Elite Four member without any deaths, and now it all comes down to one last fight. I know that Steven's levels and team are honestly pretty crazy at this point, but the biggest problem of all is basically his ace, and that is the Mega Metagross. I really don't have much on my team other than Flareon to handle that, so I essentially have to go into it with that in mind, conserving the Flareon, who I'm surprised honestly made it this far. The Nuzlocke has all come down to this, and without any further ado, let's get into the most insane Steven fight I've ever had. Alright, so he leads off with his Skarmory as I lead off with my Flareon, hoping that he goes for the Toxic, which will activate my Guts ability. And he actually does go for the Toxic, which is huge, because now Flareon is looking pretty nice with that clean boost. So a Guts boosted Fire Fang does knock this thing down to its sturdy, which of course is nice, but I obviously stay and go for another Fire Fang as he uses a full restore. So I'm honestly kind of fine with that. If he could get rid of his full restores early, I would definitely rather have them out of the way as early as possible. So the bad news here in this situation is Flareon's going to start to rack up some poison damage. If I want any chance in being able to uh, kind of clean some stuff up late game, I definitely need to be as healthy as possible. So instead of staying in to take another poison turn, I'm actually just going to switch into Espeon. So in this matchup against Steven, Espeon's kind of my weakest link. I know that I can get some quick damage, but realistically, I'm not going to be able to hard switch into this thing. So... As the Skarmory sets up another layer of spikes, I come in for free, and I can easily kind of pick this thing off with whatever I want. And uh, But un unfortunately, he's actually able to just go into whatever he wants at this point. And that brings out Armaldo. So it kind of puts me in an, in an interesting position against the Armaldo. I realize I don't really have much to switch into this thing, as I need to conserve as much HP as possible. Like, I want to go into Vaporeon, but realistically, I, I really need that thing fully healthy. So... What I'm going to instead do is essentially just sack off the Espeon and trade it for some damage on the Armaldo. I mean, Espeon would have been nice for some quick damage later, but realistically, I, I wasn't going to be able to get this thing in. And it's just, uh, you got to do what you got to do. Salute to the Espeon does go down. An Excisor to the face is an honorable way to go, but at least what I was able to do is chip this, put it in killable range uh, before, uh, before I go down. So... At least now I have a free switch, so I decide to bring in Vaporeon, and this thing's going to be super important for me in this late game, uh, just because I'm, I'm the bulkiest thing I have left, and I don't really, I didn't really want to risk it taking unnecessary damage, but I have to go into it here, and a Surf is going to finish off uh, the Armaldo. So that's two Pokemon out of the way, and I am down to four Evolutions left, so it's getting, it's getting down to it. So his next Pokemon at this point is going to be Cradilly. He's going double fossil on me, and I can't really risk Vaporeon staying in to take a Giga Drain. So I decide to switch into the Glaceon, which honestly is pretty risky as well, because this thing does carry a rock move, and I don't really have... I just don't have many options at this point. So I have to bring in the Glaceon here. It turns out this bitch uses Confuse Ray, which is quite annoying. So I decide not to risk taking both an Ancient Power and Confusion damage. I don't want to punch myself in the face. And I'm just going to instead just switch into Leafeon. That's why it's also... It's kind of annoying that he was he set up the spikes as well, but it is what it is. 
And all I can really do at this point is just go for some Leaf Blade damage. And uh, it's at this point I realize I fucked up. It, it does carry Sludge Bomb and Leafeon sadly goes down. Which this probably could have been avoided, but I honestly forgot about the Sludge Bomb, so... Yeah, and uh, at this point my evolutions be dropping like flies and I'm down to three left. I started with every one of them and against Steven I now have three. But, you know, I've got I've got a dream and we can make it happen, baby. On the free switch I have to go into Glaceon, which, you know, luckily can finish off the Cradilly with an Ice Beam. And uh, with, with the damage I got off on Leaf Blade, I, I luckily I'm able to finish that thing off. So his next Pokemon is going to be fucking Optimus Prime. The Aggron is going to kind of ruin my day. Uh, I can't switch into Flareon. I need to conserve that thing as much as possible for the Metagross. It's kind of my only answer to it. Uh, Vaporeon's my best bet, but I really wanted to try to have that thing healthy as well for the Metagross, uh, knowing that I can definitely tank some hits. So I decided to just go for the Charm. Now, the reason for this is I can just harshly drop its attack, which is huge. But of course, on the very same turn, he's actually not only going to hit a Stone Edge, but gets a crit to break through the attack drop to finish me off. So. At this point, you know, I've got two evolutions and a dream, but there is still a chance. I still have a win condition and I can make it happen. So on the revenge switch, I bring in the Vaporeon and uh, I'm able to knock it to sturdy with the Surf. It actually is able to hit another Stone Edge somehow, which you know doesn't do a lot with the Charm Drop, but I'm just worried about having enough health at this point. I just really need to manage Vaporeon's health more than anything else. So uh, he does go for another full restore, but really doesn't matter because I just outspeed next turn. I can finish it off anyway, uh, plus, you know, any full restore he uses now, like, won't be used again uh, on his ace, so I'm fine with it. So the last Surf is going to take care of the Aggron. He's down, and we have two Pokemon left to take care of. One of them being Claydol, which is amazing, so he is going to bring in Claydol, and uh, obviously I have the matchup here, which is great. And uh, it actually just dies to a Surf in one hit, which is actually amazing. So I've got the upper hand out here. I've got two Pokemon left, and all he has left is going to be this Metagross. So here's the deal. Ordinarily, Metagross is going to have the clear body ability, meaning that you can't change its stats. But if I want any chance to win, I need to lower this thing's attack with Charm. So I know that he's actually going to have to be able to go for that Mega, therefore changing its ability to Tough Claw. So on this turn, I can basically go for that Charm. With his ability changed, I do get the huge attack drop, and uh, it gives me the best shot at taking an attack with both Flareon and Vaporeon. So it's going to hit me with a Meteor Mash, but obviously with the resistance and the attack drop, Vaporeon's out here eating good. And uh, honestly, Vaporeon's feeling pretty good out here. So I can get a Surf off, I can, I, then I can give Flareon a great chance to finish it off. But, of course he is faster, and a Zen Headbutt crit just knocks me out. So the fate of this Nuzlocke come down, comes down to my Flareon. Honestly, my least favorite evolution, but I believe at this point. I've got a Guts Boost, and I have a Dream. And Steven's Metagross is staring at me in the eye, looking pretty scary. So I know that this thing's going to outspeed me, and that's the worst part. That's why I needed to get the Charm, to give myself any chance to be able to take an attack. Plus, after running damage calcs, the only way that this Metagross dies is if I go for that Flare Blitz with the Guts Boost. So essentially, it comes down to, can I take an attack and can Flareon clutch it out for us? Let's see. We click Flare Blitz here. It all comes down to this last turn. After the charm, do we take a Zen Headbutt? I go for that Flare Blitz, and we just hope for the best, boys. Oh no, the Giga Impact, I forgot I had that. Let's go! <laughs> no way! Let's go! <laughs> oh my god. We lived the Giga Impact because of the charm. Bro. But I ain't got no evolutions left. That means I lose? I thought it would have given me the win. <laughs> Wait, what? So while we do knock out all of Steven's Pokemon, unfortunately since I don't have a single Pokemon alive, I can't technically bring anything to the Hall of Fame, and we theoretically lose the Nuzlocke. I'm convinced though, in competitive Pokemon, when you win a match by knocking their Pokemon out first, even if you die to recoil, you still get the win. Does this count as a win? I'm calling it a tie. Regardless, 
it could not have come down to any more of a crazy circumstance. And uh, that was wild. Let me know your thoughts about the ending. And if you want to catch this type of stuff live, I do stream all the time over on Twitch. The link will be in the description. And come hang out while I do these runs in real time.